to greet you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, we thank God for you now that are tuning in around the world. We thank God for all the saints that are present tonight. We are here to do as we often do, and that's teach God's divine word. It is Wednesday night, and we have uh, been answering Bible questions on Wednesday nights. Uh, but tonight, I just want to do some teaching. I do have Bible questions. Some of you who have emailed me, I do have them, and I will answer them at the appointed time. But, Lord willing, tonight, I just want to try to teach God's people. I want to... I want to talk about prayer tonight. I want to talk about prayer. And I want to talk about the need for prayer. I want to deal with the importance of prayer. James twin chapter 5. And I want to start reading at verse number 16. James chapter 5. We're going to start reading at verse number 16. Y'all follow me in the scriptures now. What did it say, twin? Confess your faults one to another. Bible said confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. And do what one for another? And pray. Pray what? One for another. Saints of God, let me, let me, let me teach you. Bible said pray one for another. This is not just ink on paper. This is needed. Pray one for another. Someone asks you to pray for them. Don't just tell them you're going to pray for them and then forget about them. Do you hear me? Amen. The Bible here is teaching us pray one for another. Pray. The Lord requires us to pray one for another. We are the people of God. Not only pray one for another, the Bible said pray for kings. Pray for them that's in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life right here in this present evil world. The scriptures requires us to pray. You understand? Devil come along and tell you you're too tired to pray. You understand? We've got to be a praying people as the people of God. You understand? Pray! Don't let the devil tell you you're too tired and don't let the devil tell you you're in too big of a hurry to pray. You need to pray. What did it say, twin? Confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. And pray one for another. Pray. What did it say, son? That ye may be healed. There's a lot of healing needed. Right amongst God's people. Healing is needed. We've got to pray one for another. What did it say, son? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Now the scripture is going to outline what prayer will do. The Bible said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It availeth much. You know, the Bible talked about how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We serve a God that changed not. But y'all know something that I read that changed God? Prayer. We serve a God that changed not now. But let me tell you something. If Look, when God purposed to bring judgment upon a people, when that people will humble themselves and pray, the Lord will change his mind. A God that changed not. But yet, humility and prayer cause him to change his mind. I'm telling you something. Prayer is essential. Hear me talk. What did the book say, twin? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What did he say, son? Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Do y'all hear what the Bible said here about Elias? The Bible said he was a man subject to like passions like we are. You, you know what the scripture is outlining here? Elijah was just like us. He was a common man. Do you understand? He was a common man just like you and I. He was a, he was a man subject to like passion just like us. What did he say, son? 
and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Hear that man that is just like us. He prayed earnestly to God that it might not rain. What happened, twin? And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Do y'all hear what prayer do? Do you hear what prayer do? Look, look here. He was a man just like you and I. Man, man subject to like passion, just like us. He prayed earnestly to God that it might not rain. And the Bible declared it didn't rain for how long? By the space of three years and six months. I believe God heard his prayer. He shut up heaven where it didn't rain. Why? Because a child of God, a servant of God, asked God, my God, to stop the rain. Don't let it fall. And God heard his prayer. And he shut up heaven where it didn't rain. Three years and six months. This is what prayer did. But notice what it said. The effectual, fervent prayer of what kind of man? You got to be living right now. You got to be striving to live a life to please God. You out there living in old kind of raggedy life, don't go ask God to let it not rain for 30 minutes. This was a righteous man. And he talked to the Lord and the Lord heard his prayer and shut up heaven where it didn't rain for three and a half years. What did it say, son? And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. Ain't that so? Stop the rain. Then go back and talk to God. God sent it on down. And then it, it started raining. Prayer, y'all. Prayer. What did it say, son? And the earth brought forth her fruit. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Brother. Saints of God, we've got to pray. We've got to live right and pray. Let me talk. When you pray, don't just pray amiss. Scripture talks about praying amiss. What are you talking about, Murray? Just praying amiss. You're just uttering words. A lot of times, folks on their knees in prayer, my God, they're uttering words, words coming out of their mouth, but their mind is somewhere else. You're just praying amiss. You, look, your heart and your mind is not even on one accord. <laughs> the scriptures teaches us when we pray, enter into your closet and shut the door. What is he talking about? He ain't talking about going literally in the closet. Shut everything out. When you're talking to God, give God your undivided attention. Don't let your mind be all over the place. You praying, talking to God, and worrying about work tomorrow. Amen. You praying and talking to God and worrying about this, thinking about that, thinking about this. Think, shut the door, saints. You got to shut the door now. You see, you, you're praying, but the door, the, the door open. The door, you, you call yourself talking to God, but you left the door open and your mind is all over the place. God wants your undivided attention. He wants your undivided attention. He wants all of it. All your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He won't when you when you when you talking to him, block everything else out. That's that's you and him now. Don't just pray amiss. That's you and him now. Don't just pray amiss. When you go in prayer, believe God for what you're praying for. The scripture teaches. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's faithful. He, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You've got to believe God if you're going to kneel and pray and talk to God and ask God to grant you with this, grant you with that. Lord, bless this. Work this out. Work that out. Believe God that he's going to do exactly what you're requesting of him. Believe it. Believe it. Do you understand? Don't just utter words. Believe it. And if and look, and, and, and if you know, you've got to be honest with yourself, that your faith is not where it needs to be, that you believe God anyhow, ask God to increase your faith. Lord, I need you to help me to believe you. Because without faith, 
It's impossible to please God. When you when you you in prayer, don't just pray amiss. Ask God to help me believe this. Mark brother 11, 24. Mark 11 at verse 24. All thy giving, get an understanding. Mark 11, 24, 20. What did it say? Therefore I say unto you. What you say, son? What things soever you desire. What things soever you desire. When you pray. When you pray, believe that you receive them. Do we believe the word of God? The Bible said when you pray, believe that you receive them. Whatever you're requesting from God, believe that you're going to receive it. And what did he say, son? And ye shall have them. Do we believe that? What else did he say, son? And when you stand praying. Now, you, you, you got some conditions tied with this. When you stand praying, forgive. Do what? Forgive. You know unforgiveness will block you? Amen. Do, do, I want everybody to get this now. This is just plain teaching tonight. Unforgiveness will block your prayer. Unforgiveness will block your prayer. You've got to be able to Lay, as the Bible said, aside every weight and the sin that do it so easily beset you. You got to be able to lay stuff aside. If me and Brother Watson had a problem and we done made amends, then I, whatever the problem was, if we done made amends, I forgive him, he forgive me then we've got to lay that stuff aside. I, I, I can't carry him around because if I'm carrying him around, he's going to block my prayers. That will become a hindrance to me. Why? Because I got unforgiveness in my heart toward him. That will block you, saints. You understand? Read that again. What did it say? Start at verse 24 again. What did it say? Therefore I say unto you. I say unto you. What things soever you desire when you pray. What things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them. And what's going to happen. And you shall have them. What else did he say? And when you stand praying. When you stand praying. Forgive. Forgive. Read it son. If you have all against any. If you have all against church folk. Against any. The Bible said against anybody. If you have all against any. What did he say, son? That your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. You see the conditions? Look, we forgive that our father may forgive us. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. You can't afford not to forgive nobody. Amen. You, you, look here. You forgive not necessarily for their sake, you forgive for your sake. Because if you don't forgive others, the Bible just said your heavenly father won't forgive you. So therefore, my unforgiveness toward you will stop God from forgiving me of my wrongdoing. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to forgive you if you don't ask me. And when I forgive you, I got to lay it aside now. I can't say I forgive you, but still treat you in a manner as if I haven't forgiven you. Do you understand? Amen. A lot of folks say, I forgive. And that's how they say, I, I forgive you. No, you don't. Your very mannerism is letting me know you don't forgive me. <laughs> Do you understand? And then they still treat you based on, my God, my unforgiveness. If you forgive, it's, it's done with. It's done with. Suppose the Lord did us like that. We'd be in some trouble, man. Suppose the Lord did us like that. We'd be in some trouble. What did it say, twin? But if you do not forgive, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And you know the Lord didn't say, in other words, a particular group of people to forgive. It, it said any. Any. That's anybody, man. 
That's anybody. You, you can't hold grudges against nobody. You, you can't. I'm telling you, if you're holding grudges against folks, it will block your prayers. Hear the me? Do you understand? Be a praying people. If forgiveness is needed, then forgive. But saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Luke, brother, 11, 5. Luke 11 and that verse 5. Whenever you are seeking God for anything, saints, be persistent. Y'all hear about mine? Be persistent. You know, a lot of folks, man, they go and pray and they pray for a night or two. And if that thing don't hurt them coming to pass, they're going on about their business. Do you understand? If you're seeking the Lord for the gift of the Holy Ghost, you want to be saved. If you truly want to be saved, you ain't going to just ask the Lord to save you a night or two. You're going to cry to God with all that's within you. And you're not going to let God go until he fill your soul with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, I look at a lot of what's going on today, and I just see the difference in people today. You know, back in the day when I was coming up, man, folks said they wanted to be saved. Let me, let me tell you something, brother, sister. Let me tell you, they wasn't content until they got saved. They, they were serious about this. It was day and night calling on the Lord. They didn't just wait till they come to the house of God to, to pray. No, sir. No, sir, let me tell you something. Nothing else mattered. All they, look, uh, just give me an opportunity where I can get and call on the Lord. Amen. And that's, that's the way it was when we were coming out. Amen. We had a hunger and a thirst. We wanted to be saved. Amen. I remember as a teenager, me and Brother Hamilton being down at his house. And I was a teenager, man. Down there at his house, in his one of his rooms, living room, in, uh, in prayer, just calling on the Lord constantly over and over again. When I wasn't with him, my God, when we weren't together, my God, man, I was somewhere else in prayer, calling on the Lord. Nothing else mattered. It was all about, I want to be saved. But I see this laid back spirit that's in the earth today. At ease in Zion. Y'all pray for me, I be saved. Pray for me, the Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Mm. And then they don't even pray for them saved. Do you understand? I'm not, this is not everybody, but I'm just, I'm, this is the laid back spirit that I see today. We got to have that same hunger and that same thirst that got folks saved 30 years ago. You got to have that same hunger and that same thirst today. One thing about it, God has no respect to a person. If he saved us, he'll save anybody else. But one thing about it, you're going to do just like we did. And that's call on the Lord. And you're not going to be ashamed to call on the Lord. You know what the Lord said? If you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. Luke 11, 5, twin, what did it say? And he said unto them. What did he say? Which of you shall have a friend? I want you to hear this. I want y'all to hear this way. Which of you should have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight. Now, I want y'all to get the, the message out of this. This is dealing with persistence. If you want something from God, persistence. Not just pray, my God, man, it don't happen a day or two, then go on about your business. Forget about it. Persistence. I've heard that teaching whereby some said, you pray to God concerning something, concerning a thing, only pray one time, they said. They said if you pray about the same thing again, it show lack of faith. Have you ever heard that? That's a lie. Do you understand? That is a lie. Let me tell you, I will pray to God until he grant me my petition. Do you understand? Every time he turn around, it's me again. Do you understand? Every time he turn around, Lord, it's me again. And I'm not going to let you go except thou bless me. And you know what? God is pleased with that. 
The example in scripture that we have concerning this is Jesus. Jesus himself gave us an example of being persistent. When Jesus was in agony, when he was going through, he didn't just pray one time and then leave it alone. No, Jesus kept on praying about the same matter. Hold that twin, hold Luke, give me Matthew 26. Start at verse 38. I believe Matthew 26 and 38. Give me that first and then we'll go back to Luke. I, I want you to learn to be persistent in prayer. If you go to God concerning a matter and it don't happen right away, it don't happen when you expected it or desired it to happen, don't give up. Don't give up. Do you understand? Somebody said, well, it, it didn't work out. Don't give up. You'll reap in due season if you don't faint. Just keep praying. Keep praying. And when it seems like, well, it's just, you know, it, it, time has pass. It's gone now. Whenever God step in and work it out and bring it to pass, it's going to be on time. Y'all don't understand that. You see, time is in God's hand. And God is able to turn any situation around. You just got to be persistent. Be persistent. Don't pray one or two times and just forget about it. No. No. I got too many examples in scripture of the people of God of old who just kept crying to God. They kept crying to God. They kept crying to God until God granted them their petition. Do you understand? You see, the Lord is all wise. The Lord is all wise. God is a God that loves for you to call upon him. So a lot of times when you, you know, request God, do this at this time. No, he don't. Have, look, look just, you just try to obey him and he'll do it. But he's going to do it at his time. And when he do it at his time, it's going to be on time. Do you hear me? What did it say, son? Then saith he unto them. What did Jesus say to him? My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Jesus was getting to the point of facing death here. He said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. And what happened? Even unto death. Even unto death. What did he say, son? Tarry ye here and watch with me. He told the disciples, y'all tarry here. Wait, wait, wait here and watch with me. What did he say, son? And he went a little farther and fell on his face. Jesus went a little farther and fell on his face. And prayed, saying. What did he say? Oh, my father. Oh, my father. If it be possible. If it be possible. Let this cup pass from me. That flesh was going through something. That flesh was facing death. He said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What did he say, son? Nevertheless, not as I will. Nevertheless, not as I will. But as thou will. I love how he came under. You see, he said, not as I, w my, not as I will, but as thou will. In other words, a lot of times, we want God to move a thing. And it's not God's will to move that thing. Y'all don't get that. Amen. Let me. Can you imagine if God moved everything out of our way? We ain't got no trials. We ain't got no tri tribulations. We ain't got no obstacles. We ain't got no hurdles. We ain't, look at everything is a flower bed of ease. You would not be a praying people. Do you understand? God know what's best for us. So the Lord ain't going to move everything out of your way. The Lord want to keep you at a place where you realize you need him. Paul had a problem. He had a problem. The Bible talked about it being a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And the Bible said he sought the Lord thrice to move this thing out the way. That's an apostle, y'all. That's an apostle. You know what God said to him? The Lord simply just uh, spoke to him and said, oh, my grace sufficient. Uh, my grace sufficient. The Lord would not remove the problem. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, I'm not going to move the problem. You just keep crying to me and I'll keep delivering you. But I'm not going to move it because you might get beside yourself. 
the Bible said God allowed this messenger of Satan to buffet him because he had so much knowledge and revelation. And the Lord had to keep him at a place where you're humble and you realize I'm in charge. I'm going to keep you at a place where you realize I don't care how much knowledge you got. I don't care. I don't care what you sow, my God. I don't care what's been revealed to you. I'm still in charge. You need me. So I'm going to keep you at a place whereby you got to keep crying to me. I'm not moving the problem. My grace is sufficient. Do you understand? God is all wise. It's not moving everything out of our way. We just got to pray to get through. Children of Israel down through the scripture. He allowed them to get in trouble. Is God not in control of everything? He allowed them to be in bondage. He allowed them to get in trouble. But then when they cried unto him, he come with a strong arm to deliver them. Do you understand? But now, if they hadn't gotten in trouble, if they hadn't gotten in bondage, there would have been no reason for them to cry unto him. He allowed them to get in bondage. They cried unto him, then he delivered them. And then in many cases, after he delivered them, they forget about it. God knows what he's doing with us. What did he say, son? And he cometh unto the disciples. Jesus came to the disciples. And finded them asleep and said unto Peter. What did he say to Peter? What? What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Hey, Jesus going through. And they can't even watch with him one hour. They somewhere asleep. The disciples. What did he say, son? Watch and pray. Watch and pray? That ye enter not into temptation. What did he say, son? The spirit indeed is willing. But what? But the flesh is weak. That's everybody. That's why you got to pray, folk. Saints, you got to pray. You that are watching and listening, you got to pray. Just look. You may have the Spirit. The Bible's letting you know the Spirit is willing. The Spirit is always willing. But you're still in the flesh. The flesh is what's weak. And look, when you stop praying, that's when that flesh starts to rise. Y'all hear me now? You've got to pray to keep that flesh under subjection. Amen. You fast and pray to bring yourself under subjection. When you stop praying, flesh, flesh starts to rise. You can tell within your own self the difference in yourself when you stop praying. Yeah, I, I can tell within me. When you stop praying, stop crying out to God, stop fasting, let me tell you something. You can tell the difference. Amen. You can tell the difference. When you're praying, when you're fasting, when you're communing with God, hallelujah to God, that thing gives you strength. Moses, when he was up on the mount talking with God, he came down from the mount and they couldn't even look at him. Amen. He had a glory on him. Do you understand? He had a glory. My God, man, upon him when they couldn't even look at him. He'd been, he'd been in the presence of God. He was in the presence of God. Let me tell you something. When you're in the presence of God, God come along and give you some spiritual strength. That flesh start to diminish. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You start growing, getting stronger spiritually. But whenever you stop praying, you'll find the spirit man starting to diminish. You're starting to get weak spiritually, my God, man, and you find that old flesh starting to rise up. You find yourself starting to lean to carnality. Why are you leaning to carnality? Because you're spiritually weak. You're spiritually weak. So now the carnal man is rising up. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You see, when you're, when, you're, when you're strong spiritually, my God, man, when you're walking in the Spirit, the Spirit said, search the Scriptures. The Spirit said, study, show yourself approved unto God. The Spirit said, fast, pray. 
But when that fleshy man started to rise up, fleshy man said, watch TV. Amen. Carnal man said, you prayed already. You prayed day four yesterday, remember? <laughs> Do you understand? You, 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 you find yourself starting to lean to that carnal man. Why? Because, look, the carnal man is starting to rise up and the spiritual man is starting to diminish because you have put yourself in that position. And one thing about God, he's so merciful. He'll show you yourself. He'll say, now look at you. Now just look at you. Here we go again. Look at you. Do you understand? Look at you. He has to chastise his children. Get back in place. Get your little self back over here and pray and talk to me so I can give you some strength. So you can come out of all this junk. Do you understand? And, and when he starts chastising, you better just get on back in place. Just get on back in place now. Amen. Just obey. Don't fight against your father. Just obey him now. Because you don't want him to get to a place where, oh. Go on about your business. Go on and do your own thing. You don't want him to get there. Do you understand? When he chastises you, get back in place. You don't want him to turn, his, turn your back on. You don't want him to turn his back on you. What did he say, twin? He went away again the second time and prayed, saying. He went away again the second time praying, saying what, twin? Oh, my father. Oh, my father. If this cup may not pass if away from me. If this cup may not pass away from me. Except I drink except it. Except I drink it. Thy will be done. Then let your will be done. Do you understand? Continue to read, twin. And he came and found them asleep again. And what happened, son? For their eyes were heavy. Their eyes were heavy. And what happened? And he left them and went away again. And what did he do? And prayed the third time, saying the same words. He prayed the what time? He prayed the third time. So he prayed the third time, saying what? The same words. Jesus kept on praying to God about the same matter. Let me tell you something. That's written for us. I will pray, I will talk to God about the same matter until he grant me my petition. Don't tell me to pray one time leave it alone. The only way I'm going to leave it alone is if he asks me the first time. If not, here I go. it's me again, Lord. It's old Murray again. Every time he turn around, I'm going to be right there. Luke, brother, go back to 11 and 5. You got to be persistent in prayer. Be persistent. You say you want the Holy Ghost? Don't just call on the Lord a night or two. Be persistent. Luke 11, 5, twin. What did it say, son? And he said unto them. What did it say? Which of you should have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Which of you should have a friend? Now look, y'all, it's a friend. And you go into the friend at midnight and what happened? And say unto him. What you say to him? Friend. Friend. Lend me three loaves. Now y'all, y'all, y'all see what time it is, though. It's midnight. That is an inconvenient hour for somebody to be at my door. But notice the Bible says it's a friend. It's a friend. What did it say, son? For a friend of mine and his journey has come to me. Now, now, wait a minute. Look now. I'm going to my friend, and I'm telling my friend that uh, a friend of mine that came to me in, in, in a journey, and what did he do? And I have nothing to say before him. So I'm going to my friend, telling him about another friend that have came on a journey, and I ain't got nothing to give him. And it's at midnight now. What did it say, son? And he from within shall answer and say, What are you going to say? Trouble me not. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? It's midnight. He from within going to say, Trouble me not. What did he say, son? The door is now shut. You, do you know what time it is, man? Midnight, you at my house, come out. A friend coming in. You need something for a friend? If, if most of us be honest, we're like, man, you better get with my dough. <laughs> but notice, the Bible said it was a friend. What did it say, twin? And my children are with me in bed. <laughs> the door is shut, and me and my children is in the bed, man. What did it say, son? I cannot rise and give thee. I can't get up and give you nothing. What did it say, son? I say unto you. I say unto you. Though he will not rise and give him, 
Though he will not rise and give him. Because he is his friend. Look, look. Because he's a friend, that is not going to make him rise and give him nothing. Not because he's a friend. What did it say, son? Yet because of his in importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Because of his importunity. Importunity. What is that? Persistence. Importunity means they are so persistent, he won't, look, he won't stop knocking. He won't leave you alone. So therefore, look here. Importunity means you're so persistent until you become annoying. You're getting on my nerve. So this fella at my door won't leave. He's getting on my nerve. If I want to get some sleep, I got to get on up and give him what he wants so he can get away from here. This is showing how our persistence needs to be with God. This is written for us. Do you understand? You knock, my God, man, it may not open the first time, but keep knocking. Keep knocking. What made that fella get up and give it to him? Importunity. That person's persistent. Not giving up. If you want something from God, be persistent. You don't just pray and get what ain't happening. I'm going to hang my head. Lift your head up and keep talking to God. Lift your head up and keep talking to God. You will reap in due season if you faint not. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. Look, the Lord is not slack where he can't reach us. His ear is not heavy where he can't hear us. Just keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. And I promise you, by and by, God will answer your prayer. And whenever he answers, he's going to be on time. Saints today, my God, man, I see saints today want to just throw in the top. No. That's what the devil wants you to do, throw in the top. Do you understand? Just, just be persistent. Be persistent. I don't care what it is. Be persistent. If it's the Holy Ghost, just keep knocking. Every time the Lord comes up and turn around, you at that door. Will somebody please open that door? Do you understand? Hey, 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 me talking. Look, at, even at my house, somebody come and ring the doorbell. You know, if they come and just, you know, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ding. Hey, somebody get the door. <laughs> it starts to get on your nerves. Do you understand? That's how you want to be with God. Just keep, just persistent. Just persistent. Look, it's not that he don't hear you. Just, just persistent. Look here. If it's a such thing, we're in God, we're in God. Every time we turn around, you're right there. Do you understand? You're right there. This is what opportunity means. Persistence. Be persistent. Don't just pray once or twice and throw, it, throw, it, throw your hands up. Be persistent and keep talking to God. I don't care what it is. I don't care what, I don't care what the situation is. Everybody got different situations, my God, that they need God to intervene in. Just stay right there. Just stay right there. Devil, that get tired. Just don't let God go. It's me, Lord. Persistence. Whatever the situation is, persistence. And believe God. Persistence and believe God while you're talking to him. Lord, I'm going to stand right here. I, I, I'm right here, Lord. I'm right here. Do you understand? There's many examples in Scripture concerning persistence toward God. Luke 18 and 1, brother. Uh, go, go finish that up. Finish that up and then give me Luke 18 and 1. Continue to read Luke 11. What did he say? And I say unto you. I say unto you. Ask. Ask. And it shall be given you. Ask. Did it say what it was to ask? Whatever that petition is, ask. And it shall be what? And it shall be given you. And what else? Seek. Seek. And you shall find. You ask God and you keep seeking. 
And the Bible says you'll find it. What else did it say, twin? Knock. What did it say, son? And it shall be open unto you. Might be open unto you. It shall. Is there a difference between might and shall? Amen. Might mean it might happen. Shall mean it's going to happen. Look, shall happen. It didn't say when, but it said shall happen. Believe God. You strive to live a life to please God, and when you pray, believe God that he's going to grant that petition. What else did he say, son? For everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. He that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. This is written. What did he say, son? If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. Now, he fixed it to compare it to a natural father. The Lord is fixing to make a comparison with himself and a natural father. If a son shall ask of any of you, say it, what is that? If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. What did he say, son? Will he give him a stone? If your son, Teddy, come and ask you for some bread, I don't believe you'll give him a stone. And you natural. You a natural man. But you got enough God in you not to give your hungry son a stone if he wants something to eat. He wants something wholesome. And you're going to give him a stone in place of something wholesome. What did he say, son? Or if he ask a fish. If your son come and want a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? He want a fish and you're going to give him something to hurt him. A serpent. What'd he say, son? Or if he should ask an egg. He asked an egg? Will he offer him a scorpion? What'd he say, son? If ye then being evil. The Bible said, if you then being evil. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. You know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Do you see the comparison here? Look, we, we, we carnal. And yet we know how to give good gifts to our children. Look, at, I, I wanted the best for my children coming up. I, 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 wanted the, I wanted the best for them. Do you understand? And there's no way I would give them something to hurt them. I'm their father and I love them. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord love us. The Lord love us. And if your natural, natural fathers know how to do give good gifts unto the natural children, the Bible said, how much more shall your heavenly father Give the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to them that asked him. That asked him. Don't you know the Lord want to save us? Amen. The Bible said he's not willing that any should perish. Do, do, you, do we believe the word? He's not willing that any should perish. I don't want you to perish. I want everybody to come to repentance. Not willing. But he left something for us to do. Do you understand? He give the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. You've got to do what you can do and God will step in and do the rest. Do you understand? Amen. What did he say, twin? If ye then being evil. You then being evil. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. What did he say, son? How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke 18 and 1, brother. Persistence, saints. Persistence. I don't care what the petition is, persistence now. Just keep crying out to God. Keep crying out. Remember, I've been praying for two weeks. Keep praying. Pray two more. Remember, I've been praying for two months. Don't like this thing going to turn around. You will reap in due season if you don't faint. Look here. See, one thing about God. Time is in his hand. Two months seem like a long time to you. But look at you, you talking about the ancient of days. What is two months to him? Do you understand? Him and him are talking now. So you just got to be persistent and learn to just wait on the Lord. The psalmist declared, I waited patiently upon the Lord. And you know what the Bible says? He'll renew your strength as an eagle. Just wait. Be patient and wait. His ears not heavy where he can't hear you. God hear you. Every time you open your mouth, he hear you. 
lot of times the Bible says the trying of your faith. A lot of times the Lord just going to test us. What, what they're going to give up and throw their hands up? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Yeah, I called on the Lord for two months for the Holy Ghost. Man, I receive it. I just, I don't know. Man, let me tell you something. You better call on the Lord till you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Luke 18 and 1. What did it say, Twain? And he spake a parable unto them to this end. What did he say? That men ought always to pray. Men ought sometimes to pray. Always to pray. No men pray when they feel like it. Always to pray. I'm too tired, Twain. Always to pray. I prayed day before yesterday. Men ought always to pray. Men are all, and look here. This ain't just men, it's women too. I remember that said men. <laughs> men and women. You need to be in prayer. You need to be talking to God. What did he say, son? That men ought always to pray. And what happened? And not to faint. You know what not faint means? This don't mean pass out. Not faint means not give up. Men are always to pray and not faint. Don't give up. The Bible said pray, don't faint. Pray, don't give up. I look back over my life, even in the natural, the natural things that I sought after and asked God to work out and bring the past. I, I look, I look, and I look, I look back, and, and, and a lot of times when I pursued natural things, it didn't work out right away. But you know what? I didn't give up. No, I did not. A lot of times, even in business, you know, I, I go and talk with this 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 fellow here in business, this fellow here in business. I go and talk to this bank or talk to this mortgage company. Y'all know I've been turned down. I've been turned down. D did that stop me? Uh-uh. You, you, know, you know what you did? You didn't make me drop my head. You made me kneel. You didn't make me drop my head and give up. You made me kneel and talk to my God. And I'm going to talk to him until he touch your mind and change it. He'll touch your mind and change it. The king's heart is in the Lord's hand. And he turneth it whithersoever he will. We are the people of God. So if I'm that persistent in the natural things, more so spiritually, you do not faint. Don't just give up. Don't do that. Don't hang your head. Don't even give the devil. That, don't even let the devil get glory even for a second. To see us as the children of God with our head hung down. Oh no. You better talk like the prophet Michael. My God, man, let me tell you something. If I fall, I shall arise. Look, look, look. If, if it don't work out right now, I'm going to keep talking to God. It's going to work out. Because I'm going to keep talking to God. The only thing you did was make me go back in prayer. You ain't make me throw my hands up. You ain't make me throw in the towel. You made, you made me go back and talk to my God persistence persistence you know time failed me but I can get different examples even down through the scripture go dip seven times Amen. couldn't you just dip one time do, 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 do you get it Look, look here. You want your leper, your leprosy cleanse? Go dip seven times and go to Jordan. But this water here closer. Why can I do all that? Just be obedient. And if it takes seven times, go dip seven times. All you want is to be healed. Look here. You keep talking to God however many times it takes. All you want is your petition grant. Walk around the walls of Jericho. Keep, just keep walking. Keep, keep, keep walking. 
can't God just bring it down after, after one, one time? Look, at, he could have brought it down without you going down in, in no time. But be obedient and be persistent. Just keep walking. There's many examples in scripture. Be persistent. Keep, just, just keep crying. Keep calling on God. And he'll work it out. We can't pray once or twice and throw in the towel. Talk to God. Amen. Talk to God. And when God bring that thing to pass, you'll appreciate it more. Do you understand? You that's been calling on the Lord for the Holy Ghost and a month in the past, two months in the past, three months in the past, five months in the past, you ain't got it yet. When you get it, you're going to appreciate it. And you're going to treasure that thing. You, you're going to treasure that spirit. And look, you're going to do it. You're going to be like, uh-uh. I ain't losing this. You know what it took for me to get there? <laughs> do you understand? That's how you're going to be. Because you have, look here, you, you, you have to lay out, you have to, you have to be persistent to get it. You're going to do all you can to hold on to it. You're going to value that. Amen. Wrap it up, brother. We got to get out of here. What did he say? Saying that was in a city of judge. That was in the city of judge. Which feared not God. That judge didn't fear God. Neither regarded man. Do y'all hear this, fella? In a city of judge who feared not God. He had no fear toward God. And he did regard man. That's a lesser mess right there. He don't feel God and don't pay man no mind. What did he say, bro? bro? And there was a wind widow in that city. There was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying. She came to him saying. Avenge me of mine adversary. Now she coming to this judge who don't fear God and don't regard man. And the widow is coming saying, avenge me of my adversary. What did it say, son? And he would not for a while. He would not for a while. He wouldn't pay her no mind. But what, what, what did it say, bro? But afterward he said within himself. But afterward, this judge who don't fear God and don't regard man said within himself. Though I fear not God. Though I don't fear God. Nor regard man. And I don't regard man. Yet because this widow troubleth me. She do what? Yet because this widow troubleth me. She just keep bothering me. She keep troubling me. What did he say, twin? I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. <laughs> she getting on my nerves. Let me give her what she wants so she can go on about a bit. Now, now look, y'all. That example is pointing towards us, toward the Lord. That's what that's dealing with. Do you understand? Because of her troubling me, because of her wearying me, I'm going to give her what she wants. What did he say, son? And the Lord said. What did the Lord say? Hear what the unjust judge said. Don't you all hear what the unjust just, judge said? What is that? And shall not God avenge his own elect? Do, do you hear what the unjust judge did? Shall not God avenge who? His own elect. His own chosen. That what, brother? Which cry day and night unto him. Which cry day and night unto him. They keep crying, keep crying, keep crying. God is going to avenge you. God is going to answer your prayer. Just keep crying. Just keep calling up on it. What did it say, son? Though he bear long with them. Though he bear long with them. What did he say? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The Bible said he will avenge them speedily. In other words, God going to come on and answer that prayer. Keep talking to God, saints. Time for me, but there's many examples in Scripture where persistence got the people of God what they wanted. Persistence got the people of God what they desired. Do y'all remember when Jacob was wrestling with God? Amen. Do, do anybody remember that wrestling match? You know, it's a wrestling match took place right in the Scripture. A wrestling match. Now think about that. Somebody wrestling with God. Something they want from God. And God told them, leave me alone. And let me tell you something. The old patriarchs, they was faithful to God. They were servants of God. They was obedient to God. But that one time, Jacob spoke back. 
And God said, let me go for the daybreak. Jacob said, I will not let you go. I'm not going to let you go. Except thou bless me. Persistence. Suppose Jacob had to say, okay, 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 Lord. No problem. Uh-uh. Genesis, brother, real fast. We're coming to a close. 32-24. Genesis 32-24. Listen to this. Genesis chapter 32 and at verse 24. What did it say, twin? And Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Look, look. Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Now look. There was something there in the form of a man that was wrestling with Jacob. What did it say, brother? And when he saw that he prevailed not against him. When he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. That's a pretty good tussle there, y'all. Jacob thigh then got knocked out of joint. What did it say, son? As he wrestled with him. As Jacob was wrestling with him. And what did it say? And he said. What did it say? Let me go. The one that's wrestling with Jacob said, let me go. For the day breaketh. The, the day breaketh? Amen. Sound like they've been wrestling for a while. What did it say, son? And he said. What did he say? I will not let thee go. I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. You got something that I need. You, look, there's something that you're able to bless me with. And I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. What did he say, son? And he said unto him. What did he say? What is thy name? What's your name? And he said, Jacob. My name is Jacob. What did he say, brother? And he said. What did he say? Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. This is when the Lord is changing Jacob from ja his name from Jacob to Israel. Thou name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. But Israel. What did he say? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men. And what did he say? And hast prevailed. And hast prevailed. What did he say? And Jacob asked him and said. I, I want y'all to get this. Jacob fixing the fifth question on him now. Jacob asked him and said, what? Tell me, I pray thee. Tell me, I pray thee. Thy name. Now look, there was no problem when Jacob was asked for his name. He said, I'm Jacob. Now Jacob is asking him, tell me, I pray thee, your name. What's your name? Amen. What did he say, brother? And he said. What did he say? What for is it that thou dost ask after my name? Lord is saying, uh, why are you asking me my name? What did he say? And he blessed him then. He got his blessing, but he didn't get the name. Y'all see that now? Look, he got his blessing. He's got the purpose he was wrestling for, but he didn't get the name. Why didn't he get his name? Because it wasn't time for the name to be made known. Do you understand? Because when that name will be made known in the earth, it's when salvation will be in the earth. True salvation, that's when Jesus came here bearing that name. When the body was birthed in the earth to bear that name. Otherwise than that, it wasn't time for the name to be made known in the earth yet. What did he say, sir? And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Jacob called the name of that place Peniel? I have seen God face to face. Who did he see? God. How? Face to face. And what's the result? And my life is preserved. I'm still living. Saints of God, be persistent. When you go to God in prayer concerning anything, be persistent. Don't just pray once or twice. It don't happen. You give up. God ain't pleased with that. The Lord wants you to be persistent and keep crying unto him 
And when that thing come to pass, it's going to build your faith. And it's going to teach you patience. You've just got to learn to wait on God. Just learn to wait on God. And when you learn this patience and how to wait on God, it'll become a natural part of your life. I'm going to pray and I'm going to wait on God. I know the odds are stacked against me. I know the doctor said this. I know the, the business folks said this. I know, But you know what? I'm striving to obey God. And I know he left me a promise that I can read. John 15 and 7. Let's read that promise twin and get out the pulpit, brother. John 15 and 7. You see, I can hang my hat on this right here. St. John 15 and that verse 7. What did it say, twin? If ye abide in me. Jesus said, if you, talking to his people, abide in me. And what? And my words abide in you. And my words abide. You see, you abide in me. And let my words abide in you. Then what's, what did he say, son? Ye shall ask what you will. And what's the results? And it shall be done unto you. See, I can hang my hat on that. If I'm striving to obey him, his word is in me, I'm abiding in him. Let me tell you something. I can ask what I will. And I trust God that he's going to do it. I just got to learn patience and just wait on God. And let me tell y'all something. This preacher tonight is at a place whereby I got patience to just wait on God. I don't care what it is. I believe God is going to answer my prayer, going to grant my petition. I just got to be patient and wait on him. And you got to learn to do the same. I thank God for y'all. Until next time, peace be unto you.